Hey everyone, welcome back. Again, as usual, I hope you watched the last three, four videos where I started talking about these genetic algorithms. Especially in the last one, we looked at how we can code our own a genetic algorithm, for example, to pick something from population, you know, the fittest candidates from the population and use those two candidates for crossovers and mutations and so on. And then we kind of optimized two parameters like the percentage of smokers and percentage of bikers to predict the heart disease uh, for a given population. And after all that, we realized, okay, that great, we are getting good result. But then we ended the video by looking at a pre-configured like library that was obviously much better than the few lines of code that we put together. I said much better because it offered a lot more functionality in terms of selecting what type of mutation algorithm would you like to use, right? So now we are getting fancy. So anyway, uh, which is what we need actually if you want to play with these algorithms. Now in this, uh, in this one, I am going to talk about how you can find the best ally with maximum yield strength given all the concentration of your, given the concentration of your uh, elements that make up that ally. Now, if you are a biologist, don't be scared because this is a fun exercise that all of us can relate to. And there is a scenario, whether you're a biologist or a ge geologist or someone else, where you can relate to these. Basically, think of this as having a whole bunch of parameters that you can use to predict a final outcome, whatever that outcome is. And you're trying to, not prediction, prediction is not the problem. We know how to do that with machine learning, deep learning, whatever. Prediction is not the problem, but once you have the, the model figured out, deep learning, machine learning model, you can use that as a objective function, fitness function that represents the data. And then you can play with these values to find out what combination gives the best outcome. In our case, yield strength, the strength of this material. Okay, so that's the goal here. And a couple of notes uh, for this exercise, we are going to use a steel data set. And by the way, I should say, uh, when I say go back and watch my videos, uh, if you subscribe to this channel, then uh, you don't have to search for these ones. Again, I paused in the middle of the lecture to ask you to pause the video and subscribe. And while you are at the subscribe button, when you're done with that, or when you're not done with that, try to find the uh, thanks button if you're feeling extra generous. Okay, I wanted to mention that uh, before continuing this slide and apparently I forgot and now I'm back here talking about where you can download this steel data set. This is, this is very short. It's not a thousand images. It's just a CSV file that you can download and it contains the elemental composition of different alloys. Yeah, so uh, alloy one, alloy two, alloy three, and then different compositions that make up that alloy and what the actual lab measured yield strength of that is, yield and tensile strength, okay? Uh, and a machine learning model can be trained on this data. So now we can train a machine learning model to predict what the strength of the alloy would be for a given chemical composition. But optimization is exactly opposite. For a given function, which could be a machine learning model, what is the right combination of these values that gives us the best yield strength? And that function is there to tell us uh, what the, uh, to quantify the, the fitness. That's it. And that's what we are trying to do in this exercise right now. Okay. And we are trying to find this optimized ally composition. So we are going to, uh, these, these approaches are also called meta heuristic approaches. Genetic algorithm is one of them. And there is another one called differential evolution. I'll just show you a few lines of code because we are just importing it from another library. Both the GA and E are very similar with subtle changes. I think in one of these, like for example, genetic algorithm, the mutation is done after crossover, but in DE, the mutation is done before crossover. But in general, the thought process is very similar between these two. Okay, with that knowledge, let's go ahead and jump into our code. And as usual, I am using Google Colab. I'm going to share this code, look for the link down below. And uh, let's go ahead and connect. No need for, am I using GPU? No, we don't need GPU. I, even though I may be fitting random forest or some other, uh, I should have actually checked my code after I have written. Uh, we, we are not going, even if you use deep learning, this is very, you, this is, this is, such a small data set, you don't, uh, you don't need GPU. So don't waste GPU resources. Someone else can be using the free one. 
Okay, so the data set can be downloaded from uh, from here. I've already done that, and uh, there you go. It's just a CSV file. So let's try to understand the data first. It always comes down to understanding the data, so in your mind you can work out, okay, how to approach the problem. So let's assign this CSV to a data frame, a pandas data frame, and let's look at how the top values would look like. So there is some formula, right? I mean, they, the formula is Fe 0.62, that tells me 62% iron, whatever carbon is 0 0.0 some percent and manganese is some percent and so on, but it doesn't matter. Carbon is given right there, manganese's value is given right there and all of these and there's so many different elements and this is the yield strength and that's the tensile strength, okay? And uh, yeah, so this is how the table looks like. And uh, now let's go ahead and see if there are any, so elongation has some missing values. I mean, right here, if you see, if I scroll this all the way down, the elongation, there is a not a number right there. So if you're actually predicting how the elongation is for the best composition, then you may have to do something with those values. But since we don't care about that for now, we only care about yield strength, I'm, I'm okay with that uh, elongation. I'm gonna drop that column anyway. But let's also understand how the data looks like. Okay, so carbon, there are total 312 uh, total entries, values in our CSV file. The mean value for carbon is that, standard deviation is this, minimum and maximum is right there. Obviously, this, these are not high carbon steels, although it's getting up to 0.4%, uh, and you can see the carbon concentration in steels. Yeah, there is some carbon in steels, as you probably know. Manganese, silicon, all these inclusions, they all help in, in strengthening the material, in case you wonder, uh, you wanna understand uh, material science 101. <laughs> uh, there you go. So all of these, they actually help in uh, stopping the dislocations from moving, which means the material is stronger. Again, now you're Material Science 101. Okay, so let's go ahead and again plot a histogram. Uh, it may take a while. I should have thought twice before doing that, but we'll get a whole bunch of these. Another visual way of looking at how the distribution is for various elements right here. Again, many ways of understanding the data. What is correlating with yield strength? Is there a positive or negative correlation? Not a strong correlation right there, right? So maybe a little bit, this is negative, which means as the value goes down of manganese, the strength is going up and so on. I think chromium has a good correlation, like about 40% right there, 25% nickel, 51% uh, titanium. Okay, fine. Let's, again, I understand what's going on here. So now let's move on to the next one. So first thing first, I do not care about formula, elongation, tensile strength, uh, and yield strength when it comes to defining my X. X is all chemistry, all elements. So let's go ahead and drop everything that's not an element, and you can see what X is basically. It's carbon, manganese, and so on. And Y is only yield strength in our case. Yeah, you can pick tensile strength if you want. Let's go ahead and define our Y. Now let's go ahead and split the data into train and test. And let's go ahead and define our random forest aggressor. And let's define our model, random forest regressor. Again, all I'm trying to do right now is fit a random forest model to the data so I can use that model as an objective function for my optimization purposes. So we haven't started the optimization part yet. We are trying to find what is that function, objective function that defines my input parameters, right? That's only when you can actually optimize the parameter space. Otherwise, you have nothing to optimize. Uh, your parameter space width. Okay, now let's go ahead and fit our data to the random forest regressor. It's pretty fast because we don't have a lot of data. Now let's do some predictions on the test data to see what type of predictions do we get. Let's look at root mean squared error. The value means nothing because that depends on the actual values itself, right? So you can actually look at actual versus predicted to see, okay, if it's linear, that's, that's not bad, yeah? So that's one way you can look at a confusion matrix uh, if it's a classification type of problem, but this is a regression problem. So this is what, uh, these are the tools that I use. Um, yeah, <laughs> I just fit a linear regression for this line to see how good of a fit we actually have using all your tool, uh, machine learning skills here, traditional machine learning. That's not bad, R squared is 84.9%. That's pretty good uh, between the predicted and actual. 
So that tells me, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm in the right direction. So, uh, and I'm also checking feature ranking. Okay, which features contributed the most? And this is, again, the, con the, the in our case, feature size chemistry, like titanium, carbon, silicon. So it tells me what are, what the algorithm, what my random forest regressor thinks are the top uh, contributors are, you know, for this, uh, for this model. Again, all of this, just none of this is necessary for our optimization, but it's necessary for you to understand exactly what ha is happening with your data, which you should be caring about your data. Okay, now that we are happy with our model, now we can let's go ahead and fit a final model or a full model using full data set. Yeah, because I want to fit the full data set and then use that as the objective function to search the parameter space. You don't have to do this if your data set is, uh, has a lot more data points, then you're probably okay. Okay, uh, we are not going to use our own handwritten code for a genetic algorithm because in the last video, we already realized that the uh, genetic algorithm library is uh, more than sufficient. I mean, it does an amazing job, so we don't have to do all kinds of, we don't need to make the code any more complex. So let's go ahead and install this, this library. It's a few Python files, so it should be pretty fast. There you go, it's done. And I'm going to import genetic algorithm from genetic algorithm as GA, and then I'm defining my objective function as model, or train model on the full dataset dot predict. X is the input that goes in. And X, remember, is all our inputs. The concentration of carbon, concentration. So these are all the input variable parameters that go into our function, right? And we are predicting that, and the results should be yield strength. And I'm looking at the negative. I added a negative right there because we're trying to mini, minimize, minimize, minimize the value. Okay, so that's where we are. Let's go ahead and run that. And now let's define the boundaries. Remember, for each parameter we are trying to optimize, you need to define the low boundary and the high boundary. And it usually it makes sense to, if you have lots of data, to take the minimum value as the low boundary and maximum as the high boundary. For each of these parameters, that's exactly what I did. Yeah, so, and I converted all of that into a NumPy array. So the boundaries, again, this algorithm, takes the bounds minimum and maximum as a NumPy array. So that's what we did right here. And if you want, you can go ahead and print out so you can see it's an array of minimum carbon apparently was zero, maximum is that, minimum next element, whatever that thing is, manganese, value of that, maximum is this. Okay, now we just need to define our algorithm parameters. How many iterations do we want to run? How, what's the population size? And um, well, mutation probability and all the other stuff that we discussed in the last video. Let's go ahead and run this and go ahead and define the model. And once the model is defined, again, to define a model, you need an objective function. You need to tell what the dimension is, which is number of parameters. In our case, we have 13 different uh, chemistries that we are trying to optimize, elements that we are trying to optimize by weight, so that goes in here and so on, yeah? And boundary list is going in here and all these parameters is also an input to the, the model. And now that we have the model, let's go ahead and run it. It may take a few extra seconds compared to last time, but again, this is not humongous data set. So this should be pretty quick. Not, hu I mean, we only have like 100 of these uh, generating anyway right there. And we have uh, 16 parameters. Uh, how many elements? I already forgot how many other elements we have right there that we're trying to optimize. There you go. It's done. Now, this is how the optimization went. So obviously it started off right there and it went down here. And this is the minimum yield strength. Uh, by minimum, I say we put a negative sign right there, right? So that would be the maximum yield strength, as you can see, 2440. So let us scroll down to see what we can do. I mean, obviously there is uh, multiple ways you can extract different types of uh, output. If you just look at output dictionary right there and print the result, you'll see the results as a dictionary right here. But of course we want to know what the values are for what. And obviously we are adding some print statement right here. So we understand what's exactly going on. So for carbon 0.27, manganese 0.59. So apparently if I create an alloy, with this combination, I would get a uh, uh, an alloy, you know, with a yield strength of 2,443. I guess, I don't know the units in this case, typically megapascals, I guess. So there you go. So that's how you use genetic algorithm, but I already promised you that, okay, uh, I'll show you differential uh, evolution. You can actually get this out of SciPy library, SciPy.optimize. So let's go ahead and import it. 
I'll show you the process. It's exactly the same again. You define an objective function right here, and the objective function is exactly the same as the one before, and uh, you define the boundaries just like before. We are defining the boundaries right there. And then uh, we are defining a uh, objective, fun uh, in this case, counter, just so we can see. Let's see, differential evolution. And we are fitting this differential evolution with an objective function boundaries right there. I'm wondering why I said the uh, counter here. I have to go back and check uh, why I said the uh, counter right there. But OK, just probably to keep track of what's going on. So there you go, it's doing its stuff. I don't know uh, if it's more efficient, less efficient, but uh, both are equally fast. So uh, there you go, we are already done and let's go ahead and print and let's see. So previously carbon was 0.2%, now 0.1. I, I bet most of these are, carbon doesn't have much of an effect on the final yield strength. So you will see these values to fluctuate a lot and where it actually had a strong relationship. Remember I showed you feature ranking. Look at the top five, six features and maybe uh, this has some sort of a correlation. But now you know how to do optimization using two different approaches. Uh, one is our uh, standard genetic algorithm. The other one is uh, the differential evolution. Both fall into the category of meta heuristic algorithms. And uh, I hope you guys learned something. And in the next uh, tutorial, let's see how we can perform hyperparameter optimization again using genetic algorithm. See you in the next video.